The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Drupal people in the house, say hey. All right, excitement ensues. Ready? Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to using Agar for Drupal hosting and management. And uh, I'm Shrop, Mark Shropshire uh, from out at UNC Charlotte. And um, so hopefully we can make this kind of interactive. Uh, we've got a you know a packed house um, for the Sunday afternoon sessions, and that's for the video. And um, so anyway, we can make this kind of interactive. Folks ask questions. I, I'm not coming here as a as a as my disclaimer uh, as an expert on Agar. I'm still learning, um, but uh, I can step you through some of the things that I've uh, done with it and um, things that we're trying to do out at the university um, to leverage uh, Agar for our hosting environment. So I uh, basically ripped this off from the Agar project site. This is what's Agar. Um, so you guys can read that and you can go to the site and read it and it's, it's quite interesting. But um, the, um, the, the one thing that I kind of disagree with in this statement is um, that it's deploying and managing large websites. I don't think it necessarily has to be large. That's just, you know, whatever. I'm sure some of the folks that have used Agar and some of the folks in the past have been core committers to Agar. Um, have, um, have had plenty of large sites, but I can tell you it works just fine on small sites. Um, instead of doing this at the end, I kind of want to throw this up now so people can kind of take a look, but here's some good resources um, for Agar. If you hit the main agarproject.org website, um, they talk about uh, some of these, the Twitter account and the, um, you know, it's kind of the, that's kind of the main page where they talk about some of these resources, but when you hit that page, you'll see that there's you know, main link to community.agarproject.org. That's where all the documentation lives um, for the project and um, kind of information on how to get into the issue queues if you want to report bugs and things like that with the project and go that deep. Um, but it's got some excellent documentation on just how to install it and start using Agar and uh, playing with it and that sort of thing. Um, and it's also, they, the support folks are great on IRC. Um, feel free to pop in and ask a question. And also, as you, if, if you learn some things about Agar and you know the answer, feel free to jump in and answer a question. Because uh, when I was at DrupalCon Chicago and spoke with some of the, the main folks who are coding the Agar project, um, they're highly involved with the support and answering even the most basic questions. But obviously, if some of us that don't know as much about it or are not involved in that level can answer support questions, it helps. Uh, those guys develop and write code instead of answering uh, the same questions they've answered over and over. So I try to help out there if I can. And of course they're on Twitter and that's mostly just uh, announcements and things like that. Um, as far as installing Agar, uh, there's been for a long time kind of a manual process to install, but there's actually now a Debian package. You just have to add the source uh, to your sources list for apt and you can install it. Um, on the community site, and I reference that site a lot, there's actually a page on um, the operating systems, which is below on the slide. So you can kind of check out uh, if you're trying to, you know, run it on a different operating system than uh, Debian or Ubuntu, kind of uh, what's supported and maybe, you know, there's some documentation on, on how to handle those and maybe issues, things to watch out for. But um, right now we're running it on Debian. Um, and it seems to work real well since that's where it's developed uh, mostly. So, and uh, so that's the page on that. And uh, anyway, the installation guide. Um, I just I didn't want to really take take you guys through the installation because it's pretty simple, especially if you're doing the apt get uh, install um, agar. That's uh, that's the way I like to do it now, and uh, kind of the preferred way to handle it if. You don't trust that, and it's a security thing or whatever. You can still go through a manual process, um, but uh, but that's that seems to work well. And 
the reason I just put the installing link there is that um, there, are, there are a number of steps uh, that you just want to check out, make sure you have your system has the right you know requirements fulfilled and things like that to get it going. So, as far as um, components of Agar and what makes Agar up and, and allows you to do some of the fun things, which we'll we'll get to in a minute, some of the actual things it actually does for you. Um, there's the uh, provision uh, piece, which is the back end tool for all your system tasks. Uh, so Agar. Uh, and I mentioned it down below, Agar uses Drush, it uses Drush Make, um, and provision is actually a Drush command that Agar executes in the background and handles things like migrating sites and cloning sites, which is like copying sites, and uh, all of those tasks are handled by provision. Um, hosting is, um, the, uh, is actually just the front end piece, um, and it ties together it basically ties together a lot of the pieces that Provision has and Hostmaster has, which is the next one, the next piece. So it's kind of three big chunks here, three separate projects that make up uh, the part. But um, but hosting is what is what it's kind of what you see when you go into Agar, the website. It's just right now it's a Drupal six uh, website that manages you know as many sites and platforms as you have uh, out there. Hostmaster is a, prof a profile for installing and setting up Agar. Uh, and that's what's executed as part of uh, the app get install, or if you do it manually, um, to pull in all the pieces, you know, Drush and the Elder theme. Uh, that's part of the things that are pulled in by Hostmaster for during the install process of Agar itself. Uh, and that's just a default theme that looks it's real clean, looks nice, real minimal uh, CSS, um, just to make things simple. Anybody have any questions about those pieces so far? Um, so this is getting into kind of the, the good stuff. So once you have Agar installed, uh, you've got three, um, three main components uh, or entities. And um, the uh, servers, uh, this is where, this is the, and these are all uh, nodes. Uh, when you create these, these become nodes. So server, that's just, uh, um, that's just a, it can be a web server, it can be a uh, MySQL server, it could be an Nginx uh, web server. It could run web and database. It could run one or the other if you want to split up your database server from your front end server. A uh, server is just a designation so that Agar is aware that that thing exists. Part of setting up these servers involves, and there's some instructions on this uh, community site, part of that involves uh, configuring keys the way you want them so that the main Agar server can communicate and, and copy over platforms and the files that it needs to distribute. Uh, and also making sure that it has, that that remote server has all the proper requirements, whether it's PHP, Apache, or whatever to process um, the sites that you have on there. Um, a platform is actually just a complete, you know, take Drupal core, it's a complete set of Drupal core with an install profile, uh, modules, and themes, and all the pieces that you want to install. So just imagine when you go and look and, you know, you open up and uh, look at a Drupal site, existing Drupal site, you can actually pull that in as a platform and make it a uh, make it something that Agar then can just create new sites on top of. Um, and, uh, and then sites, those are actually the individual websites that you're deploying from a platform and you can do multiple, that's the whole point here is to actually have one common uh, platform that you can use over and over again and that you can upgrade everything um, you know, like if you have 10 websites on a platform, I mean, it's nice. You can either upgrade those separate to a new platform or you can push the scary button and try to hope that they all upgrade at the same time. And um, I usually don't like to do it that way yet, but, um, but it can be done. So I figure I'd kind of break those out a little bit more. And so remote servers, we mentioned this here, remote servers, can, they, can be a, um, they can host web, Apache, Nginx, uh, and or MySQL. See some of that in the demos, kind of how that looks uh, in Agar itself. And there's the docs on how to add a remote server, um, which that's pretty simple, pretty neat. Um, uh, and you can, you can actually extend Agar um, to have other service types. So if there's some other function or some other web server or database server that you want to support, of course, Drupal has to work with it, or you have to make Drupal work with it. 
um, you can extend that and have other service types. A um, little bit on the development side. And as far as platforms go, uh, I already mentioned that you can just take a existing Drupal site and drop it into the platforms folder and create a new platform from that. But you can also use a Drush make file. So, you know, if you went to, um, I think a Drush generator, there's a Drush generator site that, you know, kind of lets you make little make files just to kind of test and play with, or you can just write your own make files. Those, uh, Agar will take a make file and, and do whatever the make requests, build that out under slash var slash agar slash platforms in a, st in a standard build um, so that, you know, it's there. And when you want to upgrade a new platform, it's as simple as deploying a new Drush make file and then creating a new platform and then migrating your sites to that new platform. I say it's simple. That's if everything works right. Yeah, if everything goes. So we, we hope it does. Um, and... Um, so, and there's just an example. That's, this is how I've been naming my make files. I'm, I get real kind of crazy about naming and standards so that it doesn't confuse other folks on my team. To, uh, so, we've just been making a folder called builds and, um, uh, and then under that we, we make a folder with the build name. Under that we do build name.make. And the reason we do the folder for now is just I figure that I may have to some point put a, um, Maybe you put other files in there with that make file at some point or have another need, maybe even a readme or something, but just to contain those in a place that they can just live. Um, a site is a single uh, website published using a platform. So that's kind of the end goal. Where, you know, at some point you want to get this thing going so you can push the button and the site happens and you deploy a site. Um, in Agar, um, it maintains all of your Apache vhost configurations. It basically is symlinking um, a directory of your vhosts entries with you know the environment for that site back into Apache so that it can and it, it'll kick start up it'll restart uh, Apache or do a reload so that it um, so it's aware Apache knows it's out there. But it also uh, Agar handles your database configs, handles creating a password for your database. You don't have to get into all that. It manages creating the databases. Um, it handles cron um, for your sites. And, and right now, on, on, the, on the cron piece, I think right now, cron is set sort of globally, is what it looks like to me so far. So if you wanted, to, if you need, sometimes I have a need to run cron more often for certain applications and things. So um, we're, using, we're using Jenkins to run cron, so I may use Jenkins just to call cron and um, as a, you know, or you can just do it in the cron tab, I guess, if you need to do it more often. Um, it also creates uh, Drush aliases um, that actual, the Drush provision command uses, and that's just, a sh that's basically a shorthand in the Drush world so that it, it, it basically, um, Agar can reference easily different sites and um, move those sites around and perform Drush commands on them. But those, those aliases are available uh, under uh, var agar configs, and so you can actually use those Drush aliases yourself if there's functions you need to do. Um, so that's always there at the command line. And it also handles permissions for the site. So one of the things when you see a site being, uh, or look at the, the log after a site has been installed, um, you'll see notations about permission settings. So it handles permissions on your, your files upload folders and um, you know, all the places that need permissions checked. And so, um, and, and I did want to mention again, you can extend a lot of things in Agar, you can extend, it's a Drupal site. So again, you can, you can add additional modules and there are some, there's kind of a small ecosystem of modules for Agar, but you can also add other Drupal modules and test them and integrate them into Agar. Um, I've kind of been keeping my Agar installs clean so far, just uh, so I know that if things go wrong, it's something with that install and it's not another module causing issues. Um, but you can, you can extend uh, Agar with other features uh, and there, some of these, I can show you the demo, but there's some places where you can turn on uh, SSL and site aliasing so you can have other domains point to the same site. Um, I know in our world, the marketing folks make us point dub, 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 dot to sites even though we don't use that or care about that. Um, but that's, that's how, so we can use that. And um, 
you know, there's some other ones that are important for using Agar, in my opinion, the cloning feature, which we'll talk about in the site migration uh, features. So let's uh, go ahead and jump in and take a look at uh, Agar. And here's, here's actually the community site, um, the community.agar uh, project.org site. And uh, so, so there's some, this is just an open atrium site. There's some dashboard info and you know, a box for searching for help, but I usually jump right to the documentation area and there's a handbook and it's, it's done pretty well um, and it's wiki style. So if you make an account, you can edit and make changes and contribute uh, right away. I'm sure those guys um, appreciate that, any help. Uh, so I'm VPN back into home base. So we'll cross our fingers that this all, this all works for us. But um, this is the, uh, main login, when you just hit Agar, it's gonna have, a, have you log in. <clears throat> okay. So, so once you log in, you're just gonna see a list of sites. We've got a number of sites uh, running here. And um, so, so what's interesting, you have uh, you actually have the domain for the site. You've got which profile it was uh, run, built with. Uh, you got your language uh, when it's created and, and the platform. And again, this platform, the idea is you want to move towards running multiple sites off a single platform um, to get really the benefits out of Agar. Um, so that's your sites page. It, it is using uh, Drupal's, the core multi-site. Functionality. That's uh, that's exactly right. I'm glad glad you brought that up. It's an important feature. So it's not so Agar is not doing anything magical that you couldn't do just with a Drupal install and just dropping folders under the sites folders with settings PHP and and things like that. But it just it, it's helping to automate that functionality. So so that's the sites page. And you've got these three tabs that you're going to move between. Um, see my cursor there. So uh, we'll just go look, we'll take a look at servers. So this is the piece you kind of set up and you don't touch after a while. Once you, hopefully you get it set up and working. And so we've got, you know, with, you're basically a standard out of the box Agar install. You're not gonna have these last three. Those are our extra servers that are running. Um, you're just gonna have local host and an entry for the Apache uh, that can be publicly viewed. Um, and um, so we, we're actually running, uh, three other Debian remote servers, and each, each of those have Apache and MySQL on them. Um, but as you'll see in a, in a minute, when you create a site, um, you do have an option to, when you create a site, you actually have the option to say, this is where my database lives. So you can make it live on any of those servers or a, a, just a dedicated server for MySQL, um, which a lot of folks wanna do just for performance reasons so they can tune that server just to work well as a database server. Right now, the way we're splitting this up, this is our, this is a Suara T02 Linux as a server that we use kind of development purposes and we have some Git repos there and some um, our uh, Jenkins um, applications there. And we just have that added to the system in case we want to push something out to that box. And then um, right now, 03 is a test and 04 will, um, server will be a Linux uh, production but um, I intend on adding some additionals here real soon. So our student newspaper is running on Agar right now on, with Open Publish, and it's it's on another server, but it's it's got its own instance of Agar, and that's something I kind of learned along the way. Is you know I guess there could be reasons to roll different instances of Agar, um, and, and legitimate reasons, but in our scenario, it, it it just seems like we're probably better off to have a central Agar server and just use remotes for everything, um, at least right now. So any questions about servers? That's, we'll jump over to platforms, kind of get to the more exciting stuff here. So we've got a number of platforms listed. Again, this is, this is, um, this is living under slash var slash platforms, um, which I can pop into here. Brian, Brian didn't catch that, but that's, that's Deacon's, that's Deacon's stuff. You remember? Yeah. Uh, 
Blah, blah, blah. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I might as well just show you kind of a. So this is kind of a directory structure. It's a, this this uh, folder structure is a little messy because of. Um, I originally installed Agar manually and have since um, moved it over to the apt installer. So we've got to do some cleanup here at some point. But um, but backups folders where your backups from Agar live um, and go. Builds is a folder that I create that some of the other Agar folks that have come way before me and worked hard on that project. Uh, it seems like builds was kind of a standard thing. That's where you put your make files and things like that in. Um, clients is part, and I didn't mention this part because I haven't really, this is, like I said, I'm not an Agar expert, but clients is something that we probably won't use that right now at least, but um, folks that want to provide Drupal hosting and have clients, this is a way you can kind of sandbox a client into an area and say these are your sites that you have access to. So it sets up kind of the ACLs to handle that. Um, config is where uh, your vhost information lives and um, for, uh, for Apache and uh, things like that. And there's Drush and uh, dot .drush has the Drush make um, and provision. That's where those guys live because those are Drush commands. And uh, Hostmaster is your, I hope everyone can see that, but Hostmaster is your main, um, that's, really, that's really the Agar install, that's really the front end that you see. Um, platform hyphen builds is what I was, was using, but for my build location, I just changed that to builds. I've got to move some stuff and get rid of this. Um, it was a little confusing for me because there, because Agar has a folder called platforms where platforms live, and I'll show you that. Um, so each of these, except for that open atrium uh, tar zip file, is actually a separate platform. And I do want to mention something that um, that everybody with Agar project that uh, works on that project is is aware, but something that something I'd heard and something now I've experienced with the remote servers that is um, kind of kind of goofy in a way, but understandable um, on the way the remote servers work. You'll notice that the way I've named these uh, platforms, they have a server, that's what that is at the end, SWIRT03 Linux and 01 Linux. Those are actual server host names, and I put those at the end of platforms. You can't, right now, make a platform in Agar and then have it live, that platform live on multiple remote servers. So what that means is, just something to be aware of, You'll, let's say that you've got a platform and it's your Drupal 7 sandbox. It's a development sandbox that has your standard build of development tools that people use and test with. And let's say you've got two development test servers and you want to have that out there. You would have to have a folder for one test server and a folder for another. I may get this completely wrong. The reason, one of the reasons that I've seen why that's the case right now, and there may be others, is because what Agar does with a remote is once you deploy a platform to a remote server, when you build the platform, I'll show you that in a minute, it's, it actually r-syncs over all the platform files. So it's kind of creating this one-to-one -one relationship between that master Agar server and the remotes. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's something that folks are aware of and folks uh, in the community are working on in uh, the Drupal 7 version of Agar, from what I understand. So just want to mention that if that was a little confusing. Um, so this is kind of interesting on the, on, the, on the platform listing. These are all platforms. The way we've decided to name our platforms now is we're, we're putting our Drush make files in Git, and we, we actually have a repo for the make and any other files that need to live in that, for that site. Um, when we're ready to release a new make file to use on Agar, we're actually just tagging and we're just calling it build hyphen and the date kind of in European format. And so that's, uh, that's where we get the names on some of these where it says like, we're using the uh, conference uh, organizing distribution COD. I don't know if you guys have heard that when you use COD.com. It's pretty interesting distro. And so we're using that for a couple of sites at the university. But um, you'll notice I have different builds and um, for the platforms. So at one point, these two sites that were on this build were actually on this previous build, and I've migrated them over. So um, 
once once you've migrated and you don't have any sites living on that platform build, you can delete the build. So at some point I can remove it. Um, but probably like a lot of other folks in here that are sysadmins, uh, we like to think, take some time before you hit the delete keys on anything and just make sure, is that, are we sure we wanna do that? Um, so I've done the same here. I've got a Drupal 6 sandbox build and Drupal 7 sandbox build. Hostmaster is actually Agar's front end. It has to kind of be there. Um, and um, we've got, I put Open Atrium in there and that was created from a make file just to show that uh, it can be done. And um, it does show which release of Drupal each of those are running on and it shows us which server we've pushed them to and when it was verified. Um, one thing that you'll see on, on um, sites and, and servers and platforms is something called Verify. What Verify does, that is, that is a time when Agar can take an inventory, like if it's a platform, it, it, you're asking it, look at this set of code base, go back through it, make sure permissions are set right, make sure everything's in order so that we can actually use it. Um, there's a, on the community site, there's a great page on Verify that shows you each step that Agar goes through for verifying sites, verifying servers, verifying platforms. That's definitely worth a read so you kind of understand when you hit a verify button what's happening. So a good example of when you would need to verify a platform is let's say that you want to quickly add a, add a module to an existing platform. You could, I don't think this is the best practice, but you could go into that platform folder and just do a Drush download, Drush DL, name of the module. But you would need to go do a verify of that platform after you did that download so that Agar says, hey, I know that module is there, I'm gonna deal with it, and you know, it's in my list of, um, of inventory for that platform. So, um, so that's, and, and on sites, um, you know, there's a list of other things that verification does on a site, but you, basically if you make any changes to the platform, you can run the verify. A lot of times on sites, you run the verify if you're having problems with the site, you can run a verify and it may fix it if it's a permissions issue and such, but it's worth reading that because each, each of those verifications has a list of things that it actually performs along the way. So, um, so I think, any questions so far? And we'll kind of get into making, creating a platform or something. I'll show you guys that. So I'm not gonna show you how to create a server because it's uh, um, pretty, pretty simple to do that. And there's some other steps, but, um, so you can go to create, to do anything, you go to create content, like it is a Drupal site, so. We're going to create content. We're going to say create a platform. And what we can do is we can name this platform. And we'll call it Drupal 6 demo. And I like to do the build numbers, you know, some build code. So I kind of know what, have some reference for what this platform is. So that's just the name, that's just the title of the node, you know, in Drupal. So um, I kind of thought through how I was gonna name these. Uh, I, I, I don't bother putting the server name if it's on a remote server in there, because that's listed when you look at the platform lists. And I didn't bother putting the, uh, uh, the version of Drupal, because you see that on the list of the platforms when you list. So I'm just trying to, you know, put what's useful in that location. The publish path, uh, is usually slash var slash agar slash platforms. Um, and if you're going to use a make file, this f does not have to exist ahead of time. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to call it d6 hyphen demo hyphen build 2011 612. Um, if, if you're not gonna use a make file and you leave the make, the next field here is make file. Uh, can you guys see that okay out there? Um, if you're not using a make file, you do need to create that folder. Um, and you're gonna have to, if you're not using a make file, you're, you're creating a folder and actually dropping an install, you know, full Drupal install into that folder. Um, so, um, so that's what it's gonna build it off of. And that's, that, that's a perfectly fine way to build it. Um, I, I like using Drush make files when I can so that um, 
it's easy to track and I'm not having to track all the code base completely in Git or something, some version or whatever, so it makes it kind of nice. So the make, our make file is slash var slash agar slash builds and I'm going to use a, I'm going to cheat a little bit, I'm using a pre-existing make file that's out there. And here's where I can select which web server um, this platform lives on. And this is what I was getting at earlier, that you're going to have to make a platform, even if it's the same make file that you're creating it from, you're going to make one for each server that you might have to have it live on. And it's not the end of the world, it works, it, but it is something that you know, I'd like to see, see improve for sure. Um, so I'm going to push it to 03. Hit save. It's going to show us here the node's been created, and you'll notice um, every every minute um, by default, um, Agar has a queuing kind of batch system that has this queue, and it's showing that hey, we've got a task in a queue to do a verify this platform. That's going to that's going to take that make file. It's going to run the make file. It's going to do whatever the make file says. Download Drupal from Drupal.org. It's going to pull from my Git repos, what, you know, anything you do in a make file is going to handle because it's just drush make and it's not agar, it's drush make. Um, and then it's going to run through and do the agar stuff like permissions and, you know, a, you know, log all the modules that are part of that platform and themes so that it's aware. Um, so that'll run and that runs about every minute. So hopefully if everything goes well, we'll see that run shortly. Um, so you can kind of move on and do other things um, while we're kind of on this page. I'll mention a couple other things. Um, you can lock a uh, uh, platform, and the lock prevents you from migrating. Let's say that you have a platform, and it's you, you, for some reason you don't want someone to accidentally might try to migrate that platform or do something with it. You can lock it, and uh, you can't delete it. You can't migrate it. Um, and uh, migrate a platform. That's that's the that's that global button. That's that one where if you have ten sites on this platform running. You hit that migrate, and you tell it, hey, migrate to this new build, whatever the new build is. It's going to try to migrate every site. Um, and then delete, deletes the, the platform. But Agar is pretty smart. It won't let you try to delete. It won't let you delete a platform if, unless there are no sites on the platform and things like that. So, so it's pretty neat. So if we go to, um, so that's kind of a platform side of things. If we go to the... Uh, so I, and the verify is running, you can see it running now. If it doesn't work, you get a kind of a red orange looking, you know, background on that area. It tells you bad things have happened. It does give you an option to, um, and it does happen, you know, anything can trip that. Um, but um, it, does, it does give you a log either way, success or not, so that you can see exactly what happened and what ran. And, it's, and that's actually a good way, we'll pull that up on one of these, but um, we'll go back into this. So if I, if I go to this verify that just ran, uh, I can take a look at exactly what Agar performed to do the verification. Um, gives you a little info at the top, says it's successful and took 18 seconds to run. And um, it'll, it'll tell you also how much PHP memory it took, which, um, which you do need to give your, your um, PHP CLI, uh, more RAM. A lot of times they recommend like 192 megs to start with, but you know, that's, it's running not on your Apache PHP, but it's doing all this stuff, drush provision against your command line PHP. Um, anyway, so there's, it just gives you this huge list of all the functions it performs here, like, you know, loading drivers and it's creating the database. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not doing that on a platform, but the sites do the same thing. You have a log like that on the sites. So we can go look at sites now, and we'll create a site. So I happen to have, you need, you need to have your DNS entries taken care of, however you're dealing with DNS. You need to, this is no different than uh, any other domain related web Apache related Drupal thing. I mean, you know, it's a web server and so you've got to have uh, hosts and everything set up and pointed. So um, in our environment, we don't have any control over DNS, so we have to put in tickets with networking. So what we normally do is we line up a number of development uh, domains and just have, those are just DNS aliases and have those pointed over to certain servers so we can use them 
uh, whenever we need. So, so I happen to have, I think that one's available. Um, so when you're creating a site, you just want to put your domain name in for the site. Um, one thing that kind of, there's reasons for this, um, but one thing that I, uh, that I really wanted initially, and um, uh, it, it's just not there with Hager, you know, in multi-site with Drupal, you can do, um, you can do actually sub-sites under like a, one domain, you know, using hyphens and stuff, the way you name the folders, you can actually do sub-sites. That's one thing that Agar doesn't do, and it seemed like to me a lot of it had to do with just, you know, the folks that are involved didn't have, you know, they didn't have an e for it, so they didn't really push on that. Um, I was told there's some technical reasons why they didn't want to get into that because, you know, that you still have to have some, you know, master Drupal site at the top of that tree. But in the university environment, we have needs sometimes where we have a domain and you, it'd be nice to spawn off sites underneath that so you have domain slash site one slash site two. And um, there's, there's other ways that you can do that um, that are probably better than using Agar, quite honestly. Um, and uh, I'll shout out domain access as for one. Hey. Um, and uh, so you can, you can do encryption. Um, I've got the SSL feature turned on, and what's really cool, especially for test and development, is you can actually, if, if there's not, if you don't have cert set up on your server that Agar can find in your Apache configs, it will generate self-signed certs. And that's, that's kind of nice. You know, we just, we just want to encrypt things and just make sure it's, things work over SSL, and we're not gonna do our, self, our CA properly signed certs until we go production. So we have a wildcard cert um, that we use, for instance, and they charge you per domain as part of that wildcard, so it kind of keeps us out of having to pay for those, hopefully in the future now. Um, so it tells you which client, we're just admin, is uh, creating this. You get to pick your install profile, so um, we can pick Open Atrium, Conference Organizing Distribution, uh, you know, minimal and Testing, I believe, are Drupal 7, guys, and uh, so we can, uh, we, can do a, we can do a minimal Drupal 7. When I click on the install profile, it's gonna, it's gonna automatically, I don't know if you saw that, but it changed and showed which platforms are available uh, to use with that install profile. So we, I've got a platform that we have, our IRC bot, is just a Drupal 7 site running the DrupalCon bot, and um, that's one available, or I can just use the sandbox build. Um, if there are language options, like under Open Atrium, there's a ton of language options that would show up here. And then you can say, here's which database server do you want to have it live on. Just remember, when we created a platform, we had to designate the web server, so that's kind of a done deal. So it's already going, this one already lives on O3 Linux, so I'm going to pick that for the database. You have the option to go ahead and add other domain aliases if you've turned that feature on in Agar now. So you can add that. Um, and you can do a, it's kind of nice here, you can go into a redirect domain aliases to the main domain. That's, um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what you want to do for SEO a lot of times, generally. I'm just saying that generally, does that sound right? Redirect, we don't want to have both domains matching every page, so Google says, hey, you're trying to hoodoo us or something, but that's what we usually do is redirect the dub 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 just to the subdomain. Because in the university world, there's nothing better than seeing dub 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 dot center for leadership development dot uncc dot ed. I mean, it's like that's a marketing nightmare, and that is you know a brochure site in our world. So, so we're going to go ahead and hit save, and Agar's going to spawn a task. It's going to queue it, and uh, um, it's kind of cool when you create a site. You're going to get information on the site, like the database server. You know all the stuff we selected. Um, and that's it. We can move on. You don't have to sit and look at it, although it's kind of fun to do, but um, you can move on and just wait for it to install. Um, I think I did 05, and when it runs, we'll take a look at it, but um, servers, I, I know I didn't say I wouldn't show you servers. While we wait, I'll just show you a server here. Um, whoops. Basically on the server, um, it's, it's pretty simple. You're going to enter the host name for the server, IP addresses, uh, publicly facing IPs. Um, 
and you're going to say, hey, is this, is this guy going to run my SQL or not? And then because I have SSL feature turned on in Agar, I can basically go ahead and say, you know, is this, is this going to be web? But not only is it going to be Apache, is it going to be Apache with SSL? Um, okay, looks like, according to the queue, it looks like SWORIT05 Linux, UNCC, our little test place ran. So I should be able to browse to that. That's running here. And this is again, while I let that kind of load up there the first time, you, you can still on sites also view this task log, which is, I mean, this is a huge help, especially when things go wrong. It's pretty easy too, when you scroll through, you'll see, you know, red backgrounds showing you exactly which piece had a problem. So, um, so that's pretty cool. And I just realized something. That's not the proper, that is not the proper host name. So here's what we're gonna do. That's not the proper host name. I made up a host name. That host name actually lives, but it's not the right one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to that site. We're gonna edit this site. And I'm gonna add a domain alias um, for the right one, just so it'll work for us. And we'll make sure, yeah, make sure that's right. I don't know what I was thinking. I've got too many naming conventions in my head. So I'm just going to go ahead and name that as a domain alias and save it. Um, notice when I've added that domain list, it's going to re-spawn a verify task. It's going to run through, same process again. Um, you can control Agar as far as how often it runs tasks. It's going to try to run up to about five things by default, five uh, queued objects at one time um, every minute. Uh, and it tries its best to handle running things in the right order and, you know, handling um, you know, getting things done and dealing with that. So, it, okay, it did the verify. Um, but you can change the timing on that. And I, you can change the time down to seconds, but I think a minute's pretty good. I mean, you know, if you push it out and you can wait, be patient, it's, uh, it's not too bad. So now we can go to SWRT Dev 05. And there's our site. It's got a it's got a time zone error because I think I had the in this make file I had the date module so it wants me to set you know the set the uh, time zone once you log in and set it it'll it'll be good that could be part of an uh, a install profile also just go ahead and do that as part of that take care of that not a problem but so we just created that um, now with Agar Live it's kind of neat so um, they want to mention on an Agar the hosting menu. Um, there's a few, few interesting things here. So under features, under the hosting menu, um, this is, I, I'm pretty sure when you install Agar that site cloning's not turned on and site migration's not turned on. Those are things that I think you kind of want to check and activate because that's where the fun begins. So let's say that we have, this is kind of what we're looking at. We, we, we have, a marketing group and they all the time they want they come to us technical folks and they say um, you know we want to try some new stuff and that new stuff sounds to us like wow that's scary and you're not doing that in production no way um, you know it's not content you're talking about you want to install you know whatever module or whatever ch make changes to themes so what we can do is um, you by using site cloning is go to an existing site and you actually, one of the options is you can click clone and go ahead and enter a new, you have to enter a new domain and Agar within, you know, a couple minutes, whatever, it can, as soon as it can, it's gonna migrate, make copy, not migrate, it's gonna make copies of the database um, and take care of all the vhost entries and all that so that 
you have an exact copy of that production site in, at that point. That's, it's kind of like a snapshot at that point in time so they can work with it. I mean, I think that happens a lot to all of us and something that I think will be really beneficial. And the actual site migration piece, the other one that's not turned on by default, that's, that's where you say, hey, I've got a new platform and I'm going to migrate this existing Drupal site to a new platform. Um, I've, I've done it. Um, but my use cases are, I'm really particular about modules, so I haven't, you know, I haven't tried the worst case scenario trying to migrate to a platform that completely, you know, is going to break everything. Um, if, when you, when you spawn a migrate or a clone, Agar does make a backup and has, and, and it doesn't erase anything on the existing, it's just changing pointers and in, in, within the system. So, your existing site was still there until everything completely moves over. It's not going to get rid of anything you had on the old site. So, so it's pretty good about being transactional and letting you roll back. Um, and so if things blow up, it's kind of, you know, with a migration or any of these other upgrades, um, it, it's not going to leave you hanging, um, hopefully, unless something unforeseen goes wrong. Um, one thing I haven't explored is They've got a checkbox for web clusters. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that one yet because I haven't had time to play with that. But um, we don't really, in our world, we're in a department in the university, so we're not trying to host for the whole university. Um, so we don't really um, have a need yet for clustering. So we're okay on that, but it, I think it'd be interesting. Sign up form is kind of, again, if you're trying to use Agar as a service and you want clients to sign up and Say, hey, I want a site, and then you can use, you know, I don't want to get into the commerce stuff, but, you know, whatever your commerce of choice is, you can use it and, and sign people up and, and uh, for hosting or whatever. And there's an experimental section here. Um, experimental meaning that these are features that, you yeah, know, they're newer features. Um, the only one that I've used so far is SSL support, but I hear... There's people in production using NGINX support for um, hosting, so I, I know that some of that works. Um, there, there is DNS support. I, since we don't deal with DNS, um, haven't used it. Um, so, but I'm sure a lot of folks that have control over their DNS, that might be an interesting thing to have. Um, so it goes ahead and makes the entries in bind and update zone files. That's, that's what it attempts to do, is make sure your DNS is set. Uh, and clients, you can turn that on if you need to have groups of sites for particular clients to do things with and not give everybody, not let everybody be admins. Uh, and as far as the queues, this is the settings I mentioned where you can set how often Drupal cron runs by default here once an hour. Um, and, and again, as far as I can tell, this is, this is global. So... Once an hour is probably fine on a lot of brochureware sites where all you're mainly looking at is updating search indexing and things like that. Um, but we have needs. We use Drupal for digital signage, and so we actually need to run cron a lot more so um, to check for updates of content and things. So we'll probably just have Jenkins just execute you know, cron for it for that site and things like that at different times. In the task queue, this is where you can adjust how often tasks are run um, like verifies and installs and things like that. Um, I haven't changed that except for play at this point. Um, you know, I'm afraid to go less than a minute because I, you know, I just don't know if that would be good. I don't want too many jobs colliding and the queue getting really big while it's waiting on everything. I just, I need to be more patient on that stuff. Um, but I did want to go back to a site and you know, really the last thing I had for any questions is just uh, shoot through some of the features on, on a site. Um, so you can run a backup and that takes your, your uh, database and um, your uh, content, all your, you know, basically your site's default files. Well, not your site's default, but your files folder in that Drupal site. Wraps all that up in a backup that, it's, a, it's kind of an Agar backup, it's a backup that Agar understands and can restore from. Um, one of the issues that we have right now is um, that, that out of the box, Agar does backups only when you go push the button. And I, I don't know about you guys, but 
I'm not real good about remembering to go push buttons on a, every website every day and <laughs> making sure it works. And so so we're, we're setting up some of the standard scripts we use to back up the MySQL database and kind of only using the Agar backup right now just to do a backup in case we're about to do some stuff and just that, that we may want to restore to an Agar server, you know. So if you're migrating to a new Agar install existing site, it's a good, you know, it might be a great one to use, you know, use that backup so that you can restore a little easier on a new Agar site. Um, and you can delete existing backups. And you can, it's cool when you do a backup, you can actually name the backup. Um, so you've got some options here. Just do a description. Kind of like backup and migrate. I mean, as far as that feel where you can name them. Um, clone, we talked about that. That just would clone a copy of this site um, to another site um, using the same platform. Um, before you can, uh, I don't even think, it has delete on here. Yeah. So you don't see delete site listed here. And that's because you have to disable a site before you can delete a site. Um, for probably some technical reasons, but also just good form. Um, you know, I don't want to have easy delete buttons. And if I have to disable it, it gives me just another opportunity to think about what I'm doing. Um, so, so you do, so you'll run the disable job and then you'll get a delete task option. Reset password actually just uh, performs a standard Drupal password reset. It will email the site contact listed on this, I believe it's listed here. Well, it's whatever user the client was, whatever that, you know, for the, in that, in Agar, whatever the um, client's email address is, it'll fire off a uh, one-time reset link, just a standard Drupal thing, and let you reset the password. Kind of handy if someone forgets their password or whatever. Um, you can do that. Uh, migrate is really, that's where, that's really one of the big reasons we really want to use this, is just to make our upgrades a lot easier and the process more methodical than, I mean, I, I love doing Drush update, you know, doing, doing I mean, I, I think it's magical when you type Drush and some commands, it pulls down updates and updates it and it does the, you know, the update DB for you and you clear the cache and everything works and it's awesome. But, you know, that, that can be a little scary because you're, you know, you're tangling with stuff right there in, you know, especially if you're in a live site. I mean, that's definitely a no-no. But I, don't, I feel like this gives us a little more process and lets us do things where we can easily roll back and and um, so and uh, and the last one here was restore and that's just restoring your backup of course so um, that's that's all I had really if you guys have questions or discussion items feel free to jump in. Yeah, we haven't we haven't set up our cert yet. Oh, I'll repeat the question. I'll repeat that. Um, the uh, question was, um, how does the SSL work with uh, uh, Agar? Yeah, I believe is what you're getting at. How does the SSL work and wildcards and setting them up ahead of time so that Agar can deal use those certs? Um, so I haven't set up our wildcard yet because these are all test servers at this point. Um, we have used, um, Scott, here on the front row, Scott and I have used the, uh, um, the wildcard certs for test sites already. They work great because we're using LDAP with AD and we still want to encrypt, you know, user auth, you know, via that. Yeah. And so, um, but on the, uh, I, I know there's a document on it and I don't want to spend time searching for it, but on that community site, there's a document on where to set up your certs, where to put them and all that, where Agar will find them. It'll basically, basically, if you put them in the right folder, um, Agar will find the certs and it will go ahead and um, when you set up a new site and you, you check SSL, it'll say, which cert do you want to use? Do you want to use an existing one or do you want us to create a new one? So you could create a, 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 you know, a new cert for each site or we just created a cert for now just for a you know, group of test sites we're using just to keep it simple. Does that, does that help yeah. a little bit? But, so that's good. So we kind of needed that. I was holding my breath when we first tested that, and I hope, hope that functionality worked pretty well. This might be a little off topic, but um, the virtual hosting, I'm assuming, is, is dependent on uh, running PHP as a module for Apache, correct? In other words, if, you, if it's not compatible with the fast CDR, the yeah, setup, you're actually kind of jailing the PHP processes with SQXX. Files, for instance, 
Out of the box, yes. It, it, it does. Out of the box, um, the question was, is fast CGI compatible with Ager, basically? And out of the box, I don't believe it is without some modifications, but someone has done that work. Um, Omega8.cc, um, um, that is a provider of Ager hosting. And on GitHub, that, by the same name, they've got an account. And they've got a system. It's, it's, I believe it's called their Barracuda system. I've never used it. I, I, I don't, uh, haven't gone there. So I, you know, but it's worth exploring and checking out. But they have a system that uh, uses, um, you know, because they're doing hosting. They're doing hosting, share hosting. I mean, right. so they need more security on that side of it. So, um, so they've got some of that. It's worth checking out because you probably could either use or, you know, take the pieces that you want out of that. Any? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think Anger out of the box supports other databases just because, and I say that only because it doesn't present me with others. Now, um, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm sure other people have used other ones or experiment, you know. Uh, SQLite would be one that would be kind of fun to play with with seven and things like that. But um, because you can, like on the servers um, section, you know, I mentioned that you can actually write, you know, extend Agar and to recognize other services, and they've got a, a, a way to handle that. Um, I would think that if you could do it, or if someone else has already done it, there's there's certainly ways you can have it work with other databases. But I don't, I don't think it does. Um, only, only based on, I'm answering that only based on the fact that I haven't seen it present any other options for that. Not that, you know, I'm not saying you couldn't go to the community site. Although, I, I, there was one Sunday where I literally read every piece of documentation on that community site because I just felt like I needed to get it all at one time as a quick, over, you know, dive into Agar, so. Any, anything else or any questions? All right, cool. Well, I, I appreciate it, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for your time. that works the way that you do across all your devices HP Slate and WebOS HP As a service leader in cloud computing all we do is hosted computing to us the cloud is just the next generation of hosting and as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together these different sets of technologies and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.